the switch light is not the subject of this video. Instead, the subject of this video is something that feels so similar but couldn't be more different. That's right, I'm talking about the PlayStation Vita. We're going to talk about this weird little guy for a little bit. And, you know, literally yesterday was the first time I had ever held one of these in my hands. And I'm going to say right off the bat, I have no idea. Like, I can't fathom why this wasn't supported better than it was. Because this little guy is actually pretty freaking rad. So we're going to go into my thoughts on the PlayStation Vita a little bit. Uh, first impressions, uh, you know, some stuff about it. Um, and then at the end of this video, we're going to get into modding it, which actually was unreasonably simple to do. Now, one of the first things I want to go into and kind of take a look at is the back of this guy. It seems pretty simple. You know, you've got your, your, your little grips here. Um, but something I found really interesting that I genuinely didn't know was that the entire back here, I don't know if you can see the little little dots all over it, the entire back of this console here is a touchpad, much like the DualSense touchpad. And I guess technically at the time it was you know, a, a, a sister to the DualShock 4 touchpad. Uh, I would have put one of those on the desk, but mine has been lost in the Shadow Realm for years. Moving on, you've got an SD card slot. Well, I say SD card. So the Vita uses a proprietary memory card. Um, I didn't feel like buying one of those, so I bought an SD card micro adapter. Please open. And it looks a little something like this. See, it's almost an SD card, but not quite. Anyway, let's pop this guy back in here because we do not need it to be outside of the console right now. On the bottom, you've got a cartridge slot. That's right, a PlayStation console that uses cartridges. Unfathomable. Okay, before we go any further, I would like to formally apologize for all the cuts. Uh, I am very sick right now, and I have to keep stopping the video to cough. Uh, nobody wants to hear that, so I'm saving you the trouble. It's got a 0.3 megapixel camera on the front, and a 0.3 megapixel camera on the back, and in a true homage to Dank Pods, oh, you now we're going to yell into it. I'm not apologizing for the accent. Again, I'm very sick right now. Now I know what you must be thinking. You're saying to yourself, Oh, Mr. Prime, why don't you shut the hell up and turn it on already? And to that I say, Okay, let's do it. Oh, you gotta love the warning. Okay, now, they've gotten really creative with their menus here. <clears throat> uh, and that's a good thing. It's, it's very stylized. I enjoy it quite a bit. Um, but here's, here's where I say that they kind of went into the Nintendo territory. Because it's also weird and unnecessarily engineered, if that makes sense. This I do enjoy, though. You get to savor the peels every single time you turn it on. Let me turn the volume down. Hold on, we're not ready for that yet. We're not ready for that yet. Uh-oh, oops, you'll notice that mine already has a folder named Homebrew. Or actually you won't because this camera is awful and it won't record the screen well. We'll get into what all of these applications are in a little bit. So I think with their, their folders and their, you know, their, their home menu UI, uh, they were going for bubbles, but to me it kind of just looks like M&Ms because they're this weird, you know, M&M shape, and they've just got a little bit of shine to them, like a, like a, like a matte shine. Uh, 
Uh, so they really just remind me of, of, of M&M's. So this is the M&M's menu. Gone is the XMB. This is the M&M's era. Popping back into one of these folders for a second. You see what I did there? Popping. Because they're supposed to be bubbles. Laugh. It will reveal that you get 10 items per folder. That's it. 10. No more. There's no pages. There's no extra nothing. So... If you've got a bunch of stuff, if you've got a bunch of programs, a bunch of homebrew stuff, a bunch of games, uh, you're going to have to separate them into more than one folder, as I've done here with the Vita games. Um, that's not a huge deal. Obviously, it's not a deal breaker because I'm sitting here talking about it right now and I enjoy it. Um, but, you know, that's just something annoying. I'm sure that there's a homebrew that can fix that, but y y things for later. You know, sticking to the folder topic for just a second... We'll move this guy aside for right now. I just want you to see uh, my 3DS XL, or my 2DS XL. Um, <clears throat> this one is modded as well. I just want you to see how many things you can fit in a folder on this guy. No! <laughs> he thought I wanted to play Sonic 2 right now. Well, that's wrong. But anyway, yeah, you've got so much folder. Uh, Ten... Anyway, tangents and small gripes aside, I genuinely love this thing. I mean, you've got basically full PS3 games on this thing. It can remote play your PS3 and your PS4 if you've still got those. Um, and I'm willing to bet that this guy plays Borderlands 2 better than the Switch. That's right, Nintendo. Shots fired. So we're about to get into the modding which, again, is, is super simple. But first, let's yell into that camera and microphone. It's a lovely, rainy day outside here with the mud. Mmm, the world-famous mud. Got a big field here. I mean, honestly, the camera's not that bad, you know? It's bad, but... I've definitely seen worse. See 3DS camera for reference. All things considered, that camera's pretty nasty. We'll go ahead and savor the peels as we close the camera app forever. Never to be opened again. It's modding time. So again, I cannot stress enough how simple it is to mod this guy. And, you know, we can thank the people over at vita.hacks.guide, link in the description, for giving us a very comprehensive guide on how to do this. So, the first thing you're going to want to do, and this is very important, is make note of what uh, system software version firmware you're on. Uh, mine was updated all the way when I got it, so we will be following the guide for 3.74. So, assuming you're already on 3.74, uh, you're going to go to your Vita's web browser and you are going to navigate to jailbreak.psp2.dev. It's gonna look like this, and all you're gonna do is hit unlock my Vita. So, my stuff is already done, so I'm not actually going to be doing these things, but I'm just kinda showing you the gist of how to do it. So, you're going to, once you're in this menu, go to Install Henkaku, hit X to make it happen. Then, you're going to Install Vita Deploy. Once those two things are done, you're just going to go to Exit. So, when it's done, it's just going to boot you back to your home menu. It's not going to look any different, but I promise you, it is. So, what you're going to do is you're going to go to your Settings app, you're going to launch it, and immediately you'll notice that there is a new option, Henkaku settings. What you're gonna do is you're going to go down to enable unsafe homebrew. This is basically the same thing as allow unknown sources on an Android device. It allows you to install stuff that's not from the store. All right, now we're getting into the meat of it. In its current state, this is what I believe they call a volatile mod. Now that doesn't mean it's going to destroy your Vita. What that means is 
if you turn off your console and turn it back on, it will no longer be modded. So this next step is going to remedy that. And to remedy that, we're going to install a custom firmware. To do that, you are going to scroll all the way down to your bottom screen, which should now have a program called Vita Deploy. You're gonna launch Vita Deploy, and you're gonna run down to install a different OS. Now, this option will not be here if you did not enable Unsafe Homebrew. So what you're gonna do is you're going to do a quick 3.65 install. What that's gonna do is it's gonna downgrade you to a custom firmware that is based on a lower firmware official. Uh, if that doesn't make sense, sorry. So it's gonna go through all of this. Uh, I, I should not have done that. Uh, so now we're gonna wait for it to download the installer. Okay, so once it's downloaded the installer, you're gonna get to a screen like this. And I know you can't read it, just take my word for it. All you're gonna do is you're going to hit X to confirm and it'll install your stuff, no fuss, simple as that. I am going to hit R to cancel because it's already installed on my Vita. And I don't wanna do that. Once it's done, it's going to reboot and then voila, you're in a custom firmware and your Vita is permanently modded. Oh, and I know you crazy kids are talking to me right now. You're saying to yourselves, but Mr. Prime, it's all good and well that my Vita is modded, but what the hell am I supposed to do with that? But first, we're going to go on a little bit of a tangent. So let's talk space. It's always an issue on these older handhelds. There's never enough of it. <clears throat> now, you could go out and buy a proprietary billion-dollar memory card that still is just not going to have enough space for all that you want to do with this thing. Or you can go to Amazon and buy a $15 SD card adapter called the Vita to SD, SD to Vita, SD to Vita. Link in the description. <clears throat> now it's not gonna work right out of the box. So what you're gonna need to do, and get used to this first step because it's, it's an important one. Stop me if you've heard this before. You're gonna open Vita Deploy. You're gonna launch it. Then you're going to scroll down to miscellaneous and you're going to format a storage device. The target is going to be SD to Vita and you're going to format it to TextFat. Let it do its thing and after this your Vita should be able to read that SD card. Kind of. To make full use of this what you're going to want to do is go to settings, pop that bitch open, you're going to go down to Devices, and you're going to hit Storage Devices, and you're going to want to check the Use YAMPT option. This enables the YAMPT driver, which should allow your guy to see this SD card and read and write to it. I went off on this tangent because the next step is going to involve putting things on your SD card and installing them from there. The next few steps are going to be on your computer, but it's very simple, so I'm not even going to show the computer. I've linked the download for an app called Adrenaline in the description. Adrenaline is going to do something super cool that we're gonna show you in just a little bit. But first, I'm gonna show you how to install it. So. Stop me if you've heard this one before. You're going to go to Vita Deploy and launch it. You're going to go to File Manager, which should open an app called Vita Shell. Now, once you have Adrenaline downloaded, it should be a VPK file, you're going to put it on the root of your SD card. And all that means is it's not going to be in any folders, you're just going to open up your SD card and throw it on there. 
So once you run all the way down here, you should see adrenaline.vpk. You're going to hit X on that and hit X again to install it. And here's where the fun part comes in. You're going to open up Adrenaline and wait. It's going to crash. It does that every once in a while. What's that? Did somebody say, that's not a Vita, that's a PSP? That's right, the Vita has a built-in PSP emulator, and Adrenaline lets you take advantage of that to have a full PSP experience right here on your Vita. And that is super cool. Now, I'm not going to tell you where to get them, because I definitely, 100%, do not endorse pirating, especially of older consoles that the companies don't give a shit about anymore. But, you could potentially install any Vita game you want, as long as you've got the .vpk file. You just install it the same exact way that I just showed you, and you could potentially throw a bunch of PSP games on your SD card and potentially, allegedly, have a bunch of PSP games loaded onto your Vita. Again, I do not endorse piracy, but, you know, it is some people would like to do that. And again, I'm not going to show you where to get the stuff, but you can do it. And for right now, that's going to do it for our look into the world of Vita modding. Uh, I, there's all kinds of stuff out there that you can do to this thing. I'm sure that there's a mod that brings the XMB back so that you don't have to have the weird bubble folders. I'm sure that there's RetroArch. Um, and, and, you know, there's, there's all kinds of stuff. So you can, you know put in a custom theme, you, you'll notice that mine has PS1 colors on all the, the default PlayStation apps. Um, I, I mean, there's just so much you can do with this thing that, you know, it's it's really worth a buy. I got this one on Amazon for, I think it was 180 bucks. Um, I did buy that seller's last one, so I'm not going to link that guy in the description because that would be annoying. But I'm sure you're starting to see what I'm getting at here. For a fairly inexpensive device, you can have Vita games, PlayStation 1 games, uh, uh, PSP games, obviously, because there's a whole fucking PSP in here. You can get anything that it'll run via RetroArch, and, you know, the sky's the limit. Honestly, I mean, I've got a, a Game Boy Advance emulator here. Um... I haven't put any Game Boy Advance games on here, but I could, and I very well may. Or I may not, because this is kind of my Nintendo handheld guy. More on this later. But yeah, so that's going to do it. Um, I hope this was helpful for somebody out there. Um, I, I really enjoy the the modding scenes for all of these these consoles and handhelds and all that um <clears throat> and i i hope to attract an audience of people that enjoys that too you know it's it's really fun you can make stuff do stuff that it wasn't meant to do and it, it really just brings new life to these old things um and yeah that's it I hope this video was informative. I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, and if you did enjoy it, leave a like. Maybe even subscribe. Uh, we're close to 200. <laughs> um, and you know, just, just leave a comment if you have any questions. I try to respond to all comments. But most importantly, just have fun, everyone.